Muslims often present a challenge to Christians. Where did Jesus claim to be God? To which we can only reply, how are you missing this? If Jesus wasn't God, his claims make no sense because he said things that only God should ever say. As C.S. Lewis famously declared, a man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. Now, what sort of things did Jesus say that a mere human being, or a mere prophet, shouldn't say? Let's take a look at one example of a statement that only God can truly make. And since the challenge we're addressing comes from our Muslim friends, we'll begin with the Quran. There are lots of human judges in the world, Supreme Court judges, traffic court judges, American Idol judges, and so on. But according to the Quran, the final judge of all human beings, the one who decides who goes to heaven and who goes to hell, is Allah. As we read, in chapter 22 of the Quran, verses 56 to 57, The kingdom on that day shall be Allah's. He will judge between them. So those who believe and do good will be in gardens of bliss. And as for those who disbelieve in and reject our communications, these it is who shall have a disgraceful chastisement. The Bible agrees that while human beings can be judges in a limited sense, God is judge of the entire world. The prophet David says in Psalm 9, verses 7 to 8, The Lord abides forever. He has established his throne for judgment, and he will judge the world in righteousness. In the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, God says that he will one day gather all nations before him, for the final judgment. So, God, according to both the Bible and the Quran, is the final judge of all people. This means, of course, that anyone who claims to be the final judge of all people is claiming to be God. Imagine the surprise, then, that Jesus' listeners must have felt when he told them that he's the one who will judge the world. In Matthew 25, verses 31 to 32, Jesus, who refers to himself as the Son of Man, proclaims, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So Jesus is going to sit on the judgment throne, and judge the world. He goes on to say in verse 34 that he will tell the people on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. A few verses later, in verse 41, Jesus says that he will tell the people on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Why is Jesus judging the world? Well, he explains why in John chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, where he says, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Notice what we have here. God the Father and God the Son. The Son judges the world so that everyone will honor the Son the same way we honor the Father. But we honor the Father because of His nature and attributes. The only reason we would ever honor someone the same way we honor the Father is if He had the same nature and attributes as the Father. But that would mean that Jesus has the same nature and attributes as the Father, which only makes sense in light of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. Now, I have a question for my Muslim friends. Do you honor Jesus the same way you honor the Father? No, you reject Jesus' claim to be the Son, and according to Jesus, if you don't honor Him as you honor the Father, you don't honor the Father. That probably doesn't bother you since you don't refer to God as Father, but it should bother you because you're supposed to believe what Jesus said, and what Jesus said thoroughly contradicts what we read in the Quran.
So if you want to say, look, David, I don't understand the Trinity and I only want a God who's really easy to understand. That's one thing, and I'd love to have that conversation with you. But you can't keep saying that Jesus doesn't claim to be God in the Bible, because he obviously, obviously does. Of course, we only looked at one of the many ways Jesus claimed to be God. If you'd like more, be sure to visit us at answeringmuslims.com.